If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question first on your own before listening on. It is going to be useful to organize these four vectors into a table that shows the x and the y components of each of the four vectors. So let's set up such a table. Now for vector a, we can see that it is already written in unit vector notation. And what that means is that this number that's located in front of this i hat notation is the x component of vector a. So we can safely fill in two meters for the x component of vector a. And this value beside the j hat notation is the y component. So we can put in three meters for the y component. Similarly, vector c is in unit vector notation, so the x component for vector c is negative 4, and the y component for vector c is negative 6, so we can fill those in as well. Vectors b and d, on the other hand, are not written in unit vector notation, so we're going to want to convert them into such notation. Now, for vector b, it's going to be useful to remember that the x component of vector b would be the magnitude of vector b multiplied by the cosine of the angle that the vector is making relative to the positive x-axis. So, for example, this angle right here, 65 degrees, if we were to graph it, we would need to measure from the positive x-axis an angle of positive 65 degrees. Remember, positive 65 degrees would go in a counterclockwise direction. So we would measure a counterclockwise angle, go out 65 degrees, and this is how vector b would be situated in space. And to find the x component, as we said, you simply multiply the magnitude of the vector, which is 4 meters, by the cosine of that 65 degree angle. So let's go ahead and do that to find the x component of vector b. We'll take the magnitude of 4 meters, multiply it by the cosine of 65. When you do this, make sure that your calculator is set to degree mode, of course, and 4 multiplied by cosine 65 is about 1.69. So we're going to be able to fill in that value, 1.69, for the x component of vector b. Now, as for the y component, we recall that that would be the magnitude of the vector b multiplied by the sine of the angle. So it's very similar. We'll take the magnitude of 4, but this time we'll multiply by the sine of 65 degrees. And when you do that, you should get about 3.63. So there will be the y component of vector b. Now, for vector d, same idea. We're going to find the x and the y component but this time we will be using the values given for vector d. So we'll speed it up just a little bit here. The x component is going to be 5 multiplied by the cosine of negative 235 degrees. And when you work that out, you will get negative 2.87 for the x component. And then for the y component, We'll take the magnitude and multiply by the sine of the given angle. And we end up with 4.10 approximately. Now, once you have the x and y components of each of your vectors, you're going to find it useful to create another row that gives the sum of those components. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add all four of the x components to get the sum, and then also add all the y components to get their sum. And when we do that, we obtain the following values. We can write these results in unit vector notation, which indeed is exactly what part A of the question is asking us to do. It wants us to write the answer in unit vector notation. So we've already found the sum. We can therefore say that the resultant vector is equal to negative 3.18 meters, and that would be in the x direction, so we would use the i hat symbol, plus 4.73 meters, and that's in the y direction, so we would use the j hat notation, and this would be the sum of the four vectors in unit vector notation. 
Now for parts B and C, we need to find the magnitude and the angle of the resultant vector. And you will find it useful when finding the magnitude and the angle to draw a new graph, just a sketch. So we're going to make a nice y and x axis. We can see that, again, the x component was negative 3.18. So you're going to start at the origin, and you're going to measure out a distance along the x axis of negative 3.18. So because it's negative 3.18, you'd be going this way here. So there we have negative 3.18. And then the y component we can see is positive 4.73. So because it's positive, you're going to go straight up the y-axis. Now notice you're going to be doing this from the point that you left off on. So don't do it from the origin, but do it from the tip of this vector right here. So we're going to go straight up like this. You can put little arrowheads on these vectors. And again, this is 4.73. And what's happening is these two components are forming a right triangle. And so to see where that right triangle lies, you would just draw a connection from the origin to the tip of that y component vector. That is the magnitude of the resultant right there. We can find that by using Pythagorean theorem, because this is a simple right triangle. So we know that r squared would equal the negative 3.18 squared plus 4.73 squared. When you square and add the values on the right-hand side of the equation, you get about 32.48. And then you'll be taking the square root in order to solve for r. So it'll be the square root of that 32.48. And that indeed gives you about 5.7. So the resultant has a magnitude of 5.7 meters. That is the answer to part b of the question. Finally, we need the angle. Now here we have to be careful. The angle is typically measured from the positive x-axis. So you need to find the angle not necessarily inside of this triangle as your final answer, but you need to find this angle right here. That's going to be the angle for part c. Now, of course, to find that angle, it will be useful to find this angle inside of the triangle and then just subtract from 180. So to find that angle, we use the tangent. We can see that the tangent of our internal angle, which we can mark in blue, is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent. Now, opposite of our blue angle is 4.73, and adjacent to our blue angle is 3.18. Now, I know that it says negative 3.8 in the drawing, but when you find this angle inside of the triangle, I recommend just using the positive version of these numbers. So in other words, use positive 4.73, but also use positive 3.18. The reason is we are not necessarily interested in the blue angle as our final answer, so we don't want to worry about negative signs. We just want to get an overall angle, a positive angle, inside of this triangle. Now, when you divide 4.73 by 3.18, you get 1.49 approximately. Now, that's not your angle. Of course, the angle will be the inverse tangent of that result. And when you take the inverse tangent, you get 56 degrees. Again, this is not our final answer. That's the angle inside the triangle. The angle we seek, the one that's measured from the positive x-axis, would be 180 degrees minus this 56 degree angle. And when you work that out, you're going to get approximately 124 degrees. So that would be the final answer to part C. That is the angle that the resultant makes with the positive x-axis.